Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier and in our this particular video we will be learning how we can avoid overfitting in decision tree. Okay, so overfitting is a very important problem which must be handled otherwise what will happen that your model might work very much accurately in your training data set but it will not properly in your test data set or unknown data set, right? So let us see how we can avoid overfitting. So the simple idea is number of splitting in the region. Okay, like recall our previous video, I have shown you how the regions are splitted according to maximum number of elements belonging from a particular cluster, right, or particular class. Okay, so now if we reduce the number of splits, then we can avoid overfitting. So for that I have written this simple code same as earlier just the modification part I will be explaining. B1 equal to fit C3 D, D is our data set and we are taking our popular iris data set and based on sepal length and sepal width we will try to predict the class. Okay, previously we have seen based on petal length and petal width now sepal length and sepal width. So first of all let me import the data set. I will be going to desktop and I will be writing my file name which is t.txt here it will come I will simply import that okay then this is our original model and v2 another model we are forming fit c3 same only d comma class sepal length comma sepal width two more extra piece of information we need to pass one is max num splits that is maximum number of splits you want to give in your graph or in your tree and that suppose I am defining as 7 okay now rest thing same that is viewing the decision tree okay here I, here I am taking range of se sepal length and sepal width then I am performing mesh grid and then I am trying to predict that using v1 and same like v2 okay and then here I am finally viewing these two graph v1 and v2 okay same code I will be posting in the description box no need to worry but you should understand that how max num splits work. Let us visualize and understand how it is working. So it will take some time to form the model. So far, uh, the, we will be getting basically four graphs. Let me just make this like this so that you can clearly understand. So see, first consider these two decision boundary. Here this is original decision boundary and this is modified decision tree boundaries. You can clearly see our original decision tree was suffering from overfitting problem because see for this single blue color point which is iris virginica it is making one region. Here for this single iris versicolor it is making one yellow color part. So this is suffering from uh, overfitting. To avoid overfitting, we have restricted maximum number of splits in our decision tree and we are getting much simplified decision tree model. Although you can clearly see that this model has error in training data, but it will work properly on test data set, right? And here if you check the, sorry, here if you check the trees, then you can understand more easily what is actually happening here. See, this is our original that is without any restriction of maximum number of splits that decision tree and this is with the maximum number of splits as 7. Why 7? See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so maximum number of splits means either 7 means it can be 7 or less than 7 also. Okay. And here you can see how many splits are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 splits. So from 18 splits, when we are reducing it to uh, maximum number of splits to 7, then obviously it will not overfit on our data set and we can avoid overfitting problem, right? And one more thing you can do that is let me show you the graph of one decision tree. So suppose consider our original decision tree. Now here there are lots of options are present like click to display variable range, class membership, estimated probability. 
suppose I am clicking on class membership and I am clicking on one particular node. So total data points are 21. Here total data points are 19. So these total data points based on total data points also we can restrict our splitting and we can avoid overfitting. Now suppose I am defining minimum parent size should be 20 then only you, you are allowed to split. Okay. And here you can see for this particular node total data points are 19 in the parent node. So obviously it will not split further. Right. So how you can use that particular concept instead of max num splits you need to give min parent size and suppose I am giving that to 20. All right. Now if you perform evaluate selection see here although in our this is our modified decision tree although here maximum number of splits are not seven but you can clearly see it is reduced compared to our original decision tree and if you check our model that is decision boundaries which is our original decision boundary here and this is our modified decision boundary you can clearly see the modified decision boundary is basically not suffering from overfitting right so these are the two ways one is restricting maximum number of splits another one is re restricting the parent size and based on that splitting should be done okay so min parent size and max num splits these two functions you need to remember and obviously it will help you to increase the accuracy of your decision tree model okay this is all for my this video same code i will be posting in the description box if you want you can check there Thank you for watching.